The Poor Miller's Boy and the Cat In a mill lived an old miller who didn't have a wife or any children, but three apprentices served under him as they had been with him for several years. He one day said to them, I am old and want to work a little less. Go out, and whichever of you brings me the best horse home, to him I will give the mill, and in return for it, he shall take care of me till the day of my death. The third, the third of the boys, boys however, was, was the slave, who was, was looked on as foolish, foolish by, by the others. others. They, they said, said the mill was his, his but, but afterwards he would not have it. it. Then all three went out together. And when they came to the village, the two said to stupid Hans, You might as well stay here, for as long as you live, you will never get a horse. Hans, however, went with them, and when it was night, they came to a cave in which they lay down to sleep. The two, two smart older ones waited until Hans had fallen asleep. Then, then they got, got up and went, and went away, away, leaving, leaving him where, where he was. was. They, they thought they had done, done a very clever thing, thing, but it, but it was, was not going to work out well for them. them. When the sun rose and Hans woke up, he was lying in a deep cavern. He looked around on every side. Oh heavens, where am I? Then he got up and stumbled out of the cave, went into the forest and thought, Here I am. Quite and alone and deserted. How will I find a horse now? While he was walking deep in thought, he met a small tabby cat, who said to him kindly, Hans, where are you going? Never mind, you can help me. I know what your desire is. You wish to have a beautiful horse. If you could come with me, and be my faithful servant for seven years long, then I will give you one more beautiful than you have ever seen in your whole life. Well, this is a wonderful cat, thought Hans. I am determined to see if she is telling the truth. So she took him to her enchanted castle, where there were nothing but cats who were her servants. They lived nimbly upstairs and downstairs, and were merry and happy. In the evening, when they sat down to dinner, three of them had to make music. One played the bassoon, the other the fiddle, and the third put the trumpet to his lips and blew out his cheeks as much as he possibly could. When they had eaten, the table was carried away. Now Hans, Come and dance with me. No, I can't dance with the pussycat. I've never done that. Then take him to bed. So one of the cats showed him to his bedroom. One pulled his shoes off. One pulled his shoes off. And at last one of them blew out the candle. The next morning they returned and helped him out of bed. One put on his stockings for him. The one other put on his stockings his for him. One the brought other his tied his garters. One washed him. And one dried his face with her tail. That feels very soft. He, however, had to serve the cat as he promised. And chop some wood every day. And to do that, he had an axe made of silver. And the wedge and saw were made of silver too, and the mallet of copper. So he chopped the wood small, stayed there in the house, and had good meat and drink, but never saw anyone but the tabby cat and her servants. One day she said to him, Go and mow my meadow, and dry the grass, and gave him an edge tool of silver, and a whetstone of gold, but warned him to bring them back carefully. So Hans went to the meadow and did as he was told. And when he had finished the work, 
he carried the egg to a wet stone and hay to the house, and asked if it was not time for her to give him his reward. No, you must first do something more for me of the same kind. There is timber of silver, a carpenter's axe, a square, and everything that is needed, all of silver. With these, I want you to build me a small house. So Hans built the small house, and said that he had now done everything, but still he had no horse. Nevertheless, the seven years had gone by with him, as if it had only been six months. The cat asked him if he would like to see her horses. Yes. Then she opened the small door of the small house, and when she opened it, there stood twelve horses, such horses, so bright and shining, that his heart rejoiced at the sight of them. Then she gave him something to eat and drink. It's time for you to go home. But I will not give you your horse to take with you. Instead, in three days' time, I will follow and bring it for you. So Hans set out, and she showed him the way to the mill. She had, however, never once given him a new coat, and he had been made to keep his old dirty clothes, which he had brought with him. And during the seven years, had become too small for him. When he reached home, the other two apprentices were there again as well, and each of them certainly had brought a horse with him. But one of them was blind, and the other couldn't walk. They asked Hans where his horse was. It will follow me in three days' time, he said. But the others just laughed and said, Indeed, stupid Hans, where would you get a horse? It will be a fine one, Hans said. Hans went into the parlour, but the miller said he should not sit down at the table, for his clothes were ragged and torn, that they would all be ashamed of him if anyone came in. So they gave him his dinner outside, and at night, when they went to sleep, the other two would not let him have a bed. At last, he was forced to creep into the goose house and lie down on hard straw. In the morning, when he woke up, the three days had passed, and a coach came with six horses that shone so bright it was a delight to see them. A servant brought a seventh as well, which was for the poor miller's boy. A magnificent princess got out of the coach and went into the mill. This princess was the little tabby cat whom Hans had served for seven years. She asked the miller where the miller's boy and slave was. Then the miller said, We cannot have him here in the mill, for he is so ragged. He is lying in the goose house. The king's, king's daughter, daughter said that they were to bring him immediately. immediately. So they brought him out, and he had to hold his torn clothes together to cover himself. The princess's servants unpacked splendid garments and washed and dressed him, that when they were done, no king could have looked more handsome. Then the princess asked to see the horses which the other apprentices had brought home with them. One of them was blind, and the other couldn't walk. So she ordered the servant to bring the seventh horse. And when the miller saw it, he said it was such a fine horse as that they had never ever seen in his yard yet. And when the miller saw it, he said that such a fine horse as that had never yet entered his yard. That is for the third miller's boy. Then he must have the mill. But the king's daughter said that the horse was there and that he was to keep the mill as well. And she took her faithful hunts, put him in the coach 
and drove away with him. They first drove to the little house, which he had built with the silver tools. And behold, it was a great castle, and everything inside was of silver and gold. Then she married him, and he was rich, so rich that he had enough for the rest of his life. After this, no one could ever say that anyone who is silly can never become a person of importance.